this is Crystal King from with EXP Realty coming to you from sunny Orlando, Florida. Thanks so much for joining again today. I hope that you are all well and I just wanted to jump on today and talk a little bit about the home buying process. So you've decided you want to buy a house. That's awesome. But what are the steps? What do you need to do and how can I help you? So that's what we'll be talking about today and we're going to get started in three, two, what? So you've decided you want to buy a house. Congratulations. That is awesome. And I am looking forward to helping you through the process. Uh, a few quick tips before you even get started. You want to take a look at uh, what you believe your credit score is, what kind of debt you have, um, and what kind of savings you have to, for a down payment. Those are all good numbers, uh, but really the most important step is to find a good lender to help you sort through all of this. I have a list of great options here in the Orlando area. I definitely recommend using a local lender. Uh, the bigger banks, the online banks, they just don't um, get into your personal situation and your finances in the same way that someone local right here to Orlando is able to do. So that would be my first tip. Definitely use a local lender. And if you don't know of any, um, I would be happy to set you up with a couple of contacts that you could reach out to. All right, so we've hooked you up with a lender. Now what's gonna happen? So the lender is gonna take a look at all of your personal finances. They're gonna pull um, uh, their type of credit score, which is different than Credit Karma. So uh, don't be surprised if it comes back a little different um, than what you think it might be. That is the one that the mortgage company is gonna use. Um, and they are gonna look at your debt. They're gonna talk through with you. Um, the best type of mortgage to use. There are a zillion out there. Um, just to name a few, you could go conventional, FHA, uh, VA if you happen to be a veteran, uh, USDA in some circumstance. There's just a lot of different kinds and there's a lots of different kinds included in each of those. And a lender is gonna be the best person to give you all of that data and figure out which one is best for you. So after they've really dug into your finances, looked at everything, got all your docs, um, kind of put all your ducks in a row, for real, uh, they will give you what we call a pre-approval. It will let you know what your top number is that you can purchase a home um, price at. So after we have our pre-approval, it's time to really dig into what our priorities are when we're looking for a house for you. I often tell people to make a full list. How far do you want it to be from your work? Do you need it to be in a specific school district? Um, how many bedrooms? How many baths? Do you want one story, two story? Um, kind of give yourself all the data points and then pick your top three. Those are what I call not negotiable. Those are things that have to happen to make this house work for you and your family. So those three things are going to be our top paramount. We're going to try to get you as many on that list as we possibly can. But if we keep in mind three, it kind of not gets as overwhelming as we're looking through things. And also sometimes if we are a little bit more flexible, we're one, going to be able to see more houses. And in the market that we have going on right now, we want to get in front of as many houses as we can. So when we're setting up a search, if we can be just a bit more flexible, um, just a little bit more open on what we're looking for, we might just hit the perfect option. Once we have that list and we know our top three not negotiables, we are going to get house hunting. We're going to set you up a search online that will send um, houses that list directly to your email and directly to mine. I always set every one of my buyers up on a search that sends to me also. So I'm getting my eyes on the houses just like you are every single time that they list. If I see something that I think, wow, this is really what they're looking for, I'm gonna immediately also text it to you or give you a call, um, however we work best together, to let you know about it. So you're searching and I'm searching. We're gonna find that perfect house. So we've been out, we've searched for homes, we've seen lots of great options, we've finally decided this is it. It's time to put an offer in. 
Well, what exactly goes into an offer? Well, we need to write an as-is contract because here in Florida, um, homes are sold as-is. That doesn't mean that every single thing that is in the home, um, it has to be completely acceptable. We'll get into that here in a minute in the inspection. But let's talk about what the offer really is. The offer is gonna be what we're offering as a purchase price, all of the terms, the time periods, uh, the close date, how much we're gonna offer them in escrow. Uh, all of those details will be put into a contract and we will review it together. You can ask any questions. We can go through it line by line. I can send it directly to you. You can review it and then ask questions. However you feel most comfortable with um, presenting the offer is what we will do. So people often ask me, what is an inspection? Well, an inspection is when we hire a company to come in and take a look at everything in the home. They're gonna go through all the systems, they're gonna look at everything, they're gonna do a termite inspection. Um, I always recommend everyone to do one of those, uh, even if it's not required by your uh, lender, uh, depending on what kind of loan that you use. Sometimes they're not required, but I think it's always a great idea to know as much as you possibly can going in um, so that we have a really good idea of the home. I always tell people that inspections um, are not only just to let you know if we need to renegotiate or have some type of repair done to the home or potentially walk from even purchasing the home if we find something that you're just really not comfortable with and the seller isn't willing to fix it. But it's also kind of like uh, your roadmap of the home. It's going to let you know things that potentially might need to be done in the next few years. It's going to give you kind of the, the lowdown of all of the quirks of your home, where things are, how they work, um, and maybe some things that you need to start saving for down the road. So I often tell buyers, okay, when we're done with the inspection, we're going to get, you know, a 40, 50, 60, sometimes even more page report. Don't freak out. We're going to go through it. It often um, is labeled red items, yellow items, green items. The green items are just things to let you know about your house. The yellow ones um, let you know of potential things that you need to address. Red ones are going to be your hot topics. They're the ones that we're going to need to address most quickly, uh, meaning that we would negotiate the price uh, if possible, if it's not going to actually affect your loan, or we might have to have the sellers do some repairs. All of those things we would go through together and figure out what is the best way for you and your family to proceed with the home. So people often ask, are all inspections created equal? The answer is no, just like all lenders are not created equal. We wanna get you with the right lender and the right inspector. Um, you know, people will give me a call and say, I found this inspector that'll do it for $200. Well, not to say they can't do their job correctly, but sometimes, you know, when it seems really too good to be true, it is. You're always welcome to go with whoever you would like as your lender and as your appraiser. Um, but since I have worked with a lot of companies here in Orlando, I have a list for you uh, that will give you some of my top recommendations um, that you can reach out to, have conversations with, see if they're a good fit for you. Um, and they will also give you all of the options that they offer. Uh, if the house has a septic tank, we might want to have an inspection there. We might have to have an inspection there, depending on your loan. Um, and that's why I say every client needs to have someone that is willing to work directly for them. No one has the exact same situation um, and no house is exactly the same. So we need to look at your independent uh, situation and the particular house that we're looking at um, purchasing for you. All right, so now we're at appraisal. We've been through the inspection. We've uh, got all the details about the house. You feel comfortable going forward or we've renegotiated or had the seller fix some items um, to get us through the inspection period. Now we're gonna move into the appraisal. People often ask, why do I need an inspection and an appraisal? Well, they're two different things. The inspection gives you, as the buyer, details about the home. Like I said, it gives you that honeydew list for the future. It lets you know if there's anything that needs to be addressed immediately. Um, and those are kind of all data points for you as the purchaser of the house. 
the uh, appraisal is for the lender. It's for the bank to know that the amount that you've agreed to pay for the house really is a reasonable amount for the bank to loan you money on. So at this point, we don't pick the appraisers, not as the real estate agent, uh, not you as the buyer, not the seller. The lender um, is the one who assigns that. They actually don't even directly pick um, who does an inspection or an appraisal for each house. Um, so it's done kind of by like a round robin through their company. Uh, an appraiser is assigned and goes out, looks at the house, uh, determines its value, looks at comps, make sure that there's other neighborhoods to support the price that you've agreed to pay for it. Um, and then they give an appraisal amount to the lender. The lender will then take a look at it, make sure that it's in line with what you've offered. Um, and so those are kind of the differences between an inspection and an appraisal. Almost all the time, you'll have to have an appraisal for a loan and you have a choice for an inspection most of the time. Some loans will um, make you also have that. So those are kind of just the quick details of the difference between those two. If you wanna get into more of those, I would be happy to have that discussion with you and answer any questions that you might have. The appraisal is back, the appraisal is good, and it is time to buy your new house. So we are almost to the end of the process. There's probably going to be some documentation um, that the lender is going to ask for to update your records. There's probably going to be some things that the title company is going to ask for you to send. Um, but we are almost there. You're going to get your survey, um, any other data that we need to, to work out in the end. And then it is closing time. We have made it. It is time to get you the keys to your new house. So a couple days before closing, um, I will get the final paperwork. I will take a look over it. The lender and the title company will um, give you your final numbers and let you know exactly what your total number is uh, to bring for closing. You will wire that money just like you did with your escrow to the title company um, before closing, so it's all taken care of. So on the day of closing, we will show up together. I would try to be at all of my closings if possible. Uh, it's usually at the title company. Sometimes we'll have it at the new house or some other type of meeting place. Um, we can work out all of those details that would work best for you. But then we will go to the title company and we will actually sign um, all the paperwork, and at the end of that, they will wait for the lender to fund it. Usually that takes uh, anywhere from 15 minutes to sometimes a couple hours, depending on exactly what's going on. And at the end of that, you're getting the keys to your new house. I hope this was a helpful, quick little run through of some tips to help make uh, the home buying process a little more successful, a little easier, a little less stressful. I really thrive on making sure that home buyers, especially home uh, first time home buyers, do not feel stressed. This is such an exciting time in your life. Purchasing a home, um, getting into a house where you're gonna make memories with your family and your friends is so exciting. And I just want to make sure that as much as I can, I make that process smooth, easy, and not stressful for you. So if you have any questions, if you're thinking about possibly purchasing a home here in Central Florida, I would love to chat with you and see how I can best assist you in purchasing your new home. If you like this video, I would love for you to subscribe below, click the little bell. It'll let you know every time I post a new video. Uh, if you have any questions about purchasing here in Central Florida, like I said, I'd love to help you. Maybe you're not quite ready to purchase, but you're just thinking about it. You have some questions. You want some answers to some things that you're um, thinking about. Send me a message. Give me a call. I would love to chat with you. I am such a non pressure type of agent. Uh, I am really here to just help you through the process and I want to do it on your time schedule. So if there's anything I can do to help you, please feel free to reach out and always remember that the family is the heart of the home.